Hello! Thank you for coming to my channel. Today I'm going to show you how you can use things like file folders, old ledger books, papers that you find here, there and everywhere, vellum, papers that you dye yourself, old paper bags, more fun things, pages from books and magazines, laces, punchers, strings, embroidery floss, and a whole lot more, and learn how to make your own junk journal. It's easy and it's so fun. You call it, you can call it a journal, a junk journal, an art journal, whatever you want, but we're going to make one today and I'm going to show you how. So let's get started. To begin with, you need two basic things, a cover and pages. And those can be made from a, a total array of things. And I've got a few examples for you here. Here's one, this had a CD in it, and I just cut the edges off, and it would make a really nice little book. So you can cover that, you've got a good solid um, card base, and cover it and put your papers in there. It even has a spine built in. So you can look for boxes like this. You can even use like craft dinner boxes, and depending what kind of shape you want, uh, anything works any size works. You can use this kind of thing for pages, which I'm going to get to in a couple of moments. So I'll put this aside, and another one that you can use is file folders. So I bought some of these the other day from the dollar store and just thought, okay, well maybe I'll make one, uh, a book out of file folders, and sure enough, it does a beautiful job. Now you don't have to make it with a spine. I would rather have it have a bit of a spine so that there's room for more ephemera in it and more pages and so I made this one and you can you can make it of the whole piece if you like and then there's a pocket on each side but I tried some different things and came up with this and I might use it but not today. Another thing you can use is just stiff board. This is really quite stiff and would make a really good solid cover You'd have to probably cut it and maybe even with a knife in order to get the bends in it and and you might have to attach it with fabric or what have you, maybe heavy tape before it would it would actually work as a cover, but it would certainly work. Another great option is a box. As I mentioned before, this this box, for example, has the perfect size for a nice binding or a spine. And I'm, it's awfully pretty. I just got it in a magazine from the UK. And I'm going to use it. It has it even has a window in it here, so I can incorporate that somehow into the cover if I wanted to. So I'm going to be using this one to do my, my book today to show you. But before I get there, I also wanted to add, you can use cardstock. This is um, scrapbook paper, and it, it's... It's all cardstock, so it's 12 by 12 sheets, and it's heavy enough that you could use it as a cover, particularly if you double it. And since you usually add more things to the front and into the inside covers, it's going to become stiffer anyway. Plus, once you have finished your cover, if you want it to be uh, a little bit harder, you can always use a laminator and laminate the whole thing, and then put the book together. So that gives you some ideas about how you can start your book. Making a handmade book sounds actually more complicated than it actually is. Sorry about the rattling things here. So with this one, I'm going to first just cut it to shape, to size. And I'm using eight and a half by 11 paper. So I wanna get rid of this. And and then I, I want to cut it, so first I'm going to just cut off these pieces. I don't think I'll end up using the print that's on this paper for the cover, even though it's really pretty, it's kind of advertising, so, and if you want to make a book in a theme, which is a lovely idea as well, then you want to keep everything to the theme. Now you can buy beautiful kits 
where you can have everything coordinating and uh, I'm going to be showing you a little bit more about that in a few moments. So what I want to do here is decide first do I want this window on the back or the front because I don't really want uh, a book that is measuring this wide because my papers aren't that wide. Now I could do that and there are different ways to do it but not not today. So this is I'm just about eight and a half inches wide and I think what I'm going to do is maybe put this window on the back because I can't put the whole thing on the front because it's too far off to the side. So I'm going to make this the front therefore I am going to um, measure it so that it it works from this side. It's also got kind of a dent in here probably from going through the mail and all that. So what I want to do on here is when you fold a piece of of regular paper in half it becomes five and a half inches so they're eight and a half by eleven but half of eleven is five and a half so I want it to be longer than that so that the cover comes out over the edge of the papers so I'm going to just measure at six inches here so that's going to be my cut on this side only because the other side because I've folded it and squashed it over that way I'll need to do something different and measure it from that side but first I'm going to cut off these things because they're going to go anyway but when they're when they're flapping around they get in the way so I don't need that there's some very pretty work in here so this one I'll, I'll probably keep um, so that I can use for, for ephemera because it's got some, some really nice designs in it. So I'll put that away in my scrap container. Now for this one, I'm going to, what I'm going to do I think is, I might end up actually covering up that window altogether. So, and that's the fun thing about doing a junk journal or a handmade journal, or also called an art journal, is that you get to decide and you can change your mind anytime, all the time, and it's all good. So this makes it easier for me to cut it. I'm going to use my little cutter and hope that it actually does the job. So now all I have to do, now you could just draw a line and cut along the line works as well but this is a little bit time saving so I'm going to just line up these marks with this line in the center here and push hard and I'm left with this now also there's you know some pretty stuff in there which I'll keep and use later I have a little bin that I put these kind of scraps in so that I've always got a place for them so there's that. Now I'm also going to cut it this way. But the cutter gives a nice straight line better than I can with scissors. I tend to wobble a little bit. So there's my cover. And it has a nice spine on it. So we're going to uh, put our binding in there. And I'm going to talk about binding in a little bit. I'll bring my flowers back here because I really like them and the little lights. Now, for interiors, you have so many choices, and I'm going to just go through some of them. This is a piece of newsprint, which I had, um, I have actually a, a massive big sheet of it. It's the kind of thing you use, you see, for um, corporate presentations where they flip over. It's also great for making big sketches which is why I have it. But I cut this down to an eight and a half by eleven and it's also had some, I've used it as a background for some watercolor so it's got some water, some color and a little bit of um, water. It's not damaged but it's you know water, watermarks. So this one, as you can see, isn't even cut very straight, and I'm not even going to bother with that. 
right now. And I'm using a bone folder, which is not bone, it's just plastic, in order to smooth out that. Now, that so just something simple like that newsprint, even pages from newspapers work to make pages for your book. I've got these papers, which are, these are actually um, part of my own flower and twig embellishments that's on my shop at Summer Bay Studio. So these are all the background pages, so I'm going to be including some of these. And on the back they're white, so I can put something completely different. And I use just, just regular copy paper, even though there's a lot of color, because it doesn't matter, they're going to be covered up anyway. In fact, if I wanted to, I could put two of them like this and put them together and make that a page. So, as you can see, there's just multiple choices. Another option is a paper napkin. You can actually use a paper napkin, although they tend to be kind of flimsy, and you'll probably want to use the design on top of something else, which we'll cover in another time. And you can use tissue paper. This came out of some kind of packaging. It's light, but there's nothing wrong with that. Just gotta move some things here. Um, here's another option, just a paper bag. So, and these make great pockets, so if I wanted to, I could put this, fold it in half so that it fits in my cover, and then use that for, um, for a pocket where I could slide uh, tags or journal cards or anything I wanted to. Another option is paper like this, which is kind of kind of quirky. Um, I came across this in a big clean out the other day. It's a budget that my husband and I started, <laughs> well we tried to do, in 1992. It was buried quite deeply, let me tell you. And obviously we didn't succeed very far on it. It turned out it wasn't a very effective use for us. However, I have all these pages now that I can use in my junk journals. So I'm just going to tear one of those out right now because I want to include one. Oh, another thing that you can do is is coffee or tea dye paper and I did that with this so it gives it this rumpled feel and it's kind of a vintage look I dried it in the oven at fairly high heat for a very short time so it kind of singed the edges which gives it a really kind of neat look another option is one that I tried with watercolor and what I did was mix up a bunch of watercolor just in a glass like this or my this is one of my painting glasses um, I used, I'll just show you, I just have to move a couple of things here. Um, I made it quite thick and to do that I just, you know, went back into the, into the paint with the brush, you know, over and over and dropped it in. So I put a little bit of water, you know, maybe, maybe half a glass, paint, paint, drop, 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 swoosh, swoosh, pick up more until you have a really thick mixture. And then I poured it all into onto a cookie sheet. I think I lined it with foil so that it wouldn't leave paint on my cookie sheet, but I lined it with foil and poured it on there and let them soak for, you know, just a few minutes. And then pulled them out and put them in the oven. So I did several of them. And, and then I had the idea to take some of them, scan them. They have really, <laughs> came out with really interesting features. I scanned them and they're available in my shop. So here's another one when it was in the oven a second piece was on top and this one got a little singed but this one didn't so it makes kind of a cool effect and they're, they can be quite rumpled and if you don't want them to be that rumpled just iron them. So I just use my iron on steam and um, just go whoosh whoosh and you're done. And here's a bunch more that I did with tea. So these are great journal pages, so you can easily write on them. They're, they're a little more crisp, I think, than ordinary paper. And if you want them to be a little heavier, just use heavier paper. So, and the last option I'm going to show you, not that this is, well actually it's not the last one. Um, 
The opportunities are endless, basically. This is just copy paper. It's a little bit heavier than 20 pound. I think it's maybe 24 pound. Um, you can just take some of these, fold them, put them in the book, and you've got a book. It, it could not be simpler. And another, another really fun idea is magazine pages. So I made the mistake <clears throat> this month of buying Victoria magazine twice. The covers look so much the same. I look at them and go, do I have that? I better get it now. You know, anyway, um, you can take pa pages out of here. Like this is beautiful. This would make uh, a nice piece with the tulips and the radishes. This is really pretty. The, the pictures are, are generally vertical, but that doesn't really matter because if you wanted to, you could put, fold the page like this, put it in your book along here, and then you can add, um, you can, oh, here's another idea. You can make it into a pocket like this, add some embellishments to them, some ephemera, and you've got a really pretty, oh wow, look at that. I think I'm going to be using this one. These are so gorgeous. I mean, I love Victoria magazines because the the beauty of of the photographs just is lifts your heart. F for example, this one, a full page of tulips, or this one. I love tea sets and china and things like that. So if you, I would say, put the things that you love in your book, or if you want to do a theme then choose things that fit with the theme. So, for example, Easter's coming up. If you wanted to do a bunny theme, just find things that have have rabbits. And you can find pictures online that uh, are copyright free if you're, as long as you're using them <clears throat> simply for your own use. This is pretty, you know, this is pretty. So is this, that would make a lovely page. So I'm going to be using some of those as well. Now, here's another idea, a greeting card. This one is uh, a Mother's Day card from one of my daughters and her family. This can be left in, actually, and just covered up. This can go into the binding, and this side can be covered up with something else. So pop that in, and you've got a page. Here's another one I got from online somewhere. and. I, this could be used, for example, like this. Fold that this way, fold it this way. You've got pockets. Um, put put your decoration there, and it's great to use. Here's another piece. Same thing. You know, depending what size they are, you have to cut off the the white <clears throat> or not. Just cover it up with something else. Glue something else in. So let's make. A signature. Now a signature is a group of pages that make uh, make up a bunch in the book. And I'm going to show you what I mean. In this book you'll notice all these little loops. Each one of those is a signature. So this first page is not because it's it's part of the frontispiece, but this is a signature, and there are, there's probably a dozen in here, and that makes up the book. So you can put as many pages as you want to into a signature, and you can put as many signatures as you want to into a book. Now one thing to remember about making your own book is that you're going to want to fill it with things. Things like photographs, this, this is one of me in Rome in 2019 that I, I I printed with my little Instax and which is a lot of fun. So if you're doing a theme like a travel book, you can put little photos, you can put drawings, you can put whatever you want in it, maps, whatever works for you. And um, if you're doing a theme like I mentioned on rabbits, for example, for Easter, then you'll want to choose those kind of things. But today I'm going to use kind of a combination of things. And some of these, and I love these blue watercolor pages because I love blue. 
So I'm not going to do that one because it was actually torn on one corner. So all you have to do with these, I'm going to just fold these in half. Now if you, if you have a scoring board, you can score them first. But really, who doesn't know how to fold a piece of paper evenly? So, I mean, sometimes I wonder if I do, but that's all I do. And then I, I do like to press them down well like this so that they're not as fat. So I'm going to just do, get some of these ready. And then we're going to put them all together. And for this book, I don't, I'm not going to make a huge number of pages. Now this one actually does work, doesn't it? So I'm just going to fold it in half. So it'll be like a skinny page. And I'm fine with that. Because sometimes you want to put a fold out on it, like an envelope where you, it'll attach here and flip out this way and that works perfectly. This one doesn't have, need to have anything done with it. This one, let me see, what, what measurement are we? This one is a little bit big, but um, I, I, can, I can deal with that later. And I'm not going to even cut off that rough edge where I tore it. I'm just gonna leave that like that. All right, I'm going to do one of these. And I think with these, I'm going to do some of them the opposite way. Now, in, in my flower and twig embellishments, I've got hundreds of ephemera pieces that you can cut out and use. Most of them are fussy cut. If you have a cutting machine, like a Cricut or a Silhouette, it's perfect for that because some of them are quite fine details. Other things that you can use for your book are, are paper doilies. So I'm going to just put some of these together in random order just so there's some variety. I'll do this. And there's our signature. Now it doesn't have to all line up at bottom or top. It can be however you want. But what we have to do now is, is make holes in it and make holes in the cover for the binding. So here's my cover. And what I want to do is look, how is this gonna fit? It's nice. Now I may decide after all said and done to trim these off a little bit so they're not quite that much bigger than my interior. In fact I think I'll bring this down a little bit because I need to make the holes and I will trim this off about about a quarter of an inch I think and I can do these these after so I'm gonna do that now. This is our signature. Now if you want to you can trim all these to exactly the same size. It's totally up to you. I'm not going to for this one just because I kind of like it like this. So this is going to go in here like this and then what we need to do is bind it so that it attaches here. Now you can reinforce this with with tape or fabric or anything you want. You can decorate this first which Ordinarily I would probably do, but I haven't really decided how I want to decorate it. So I'm going to show you how to attach it. Now there are a couple of different ways you can do that. If it's not too thick, you can sew this so that it's all together. If you've got a sewing machine, you can uh, just put it on a long stitch and just sew right down there and then it's it's solid together. Another way to do it is to, is to use um, something like like you can use elastic. I actually just found this in my my junk box. Everybody has one, right? Um, it's elastic cord, and I could what I could do is just 
make a loop so that it fits tightly here, then the pages can come out. And you can do that if you put, if you want to add more signatures, then you just put another loop on there. And, and then you can cover the back of it with paper or fabric or whatever on, on the outside. You can use just sewing elastic like this for the same thing. You can use ribbon, um, narrow ribbon like that, or you can use embroidery floss and do a stitch um, binding like that. You could use something glitzy like this. You could even use um, a fluffy ribbon such as this one, which is, is very pretty and you'd probably want parts of it to show. So you could have it actually show in the center or you can put the knot on the outside and it will it would be a nice feature. But what I am going to do first, I'm just going to punch some holes and show you how we can make this work. Now some of these shorter pieces might not get caught in the holes so and that's just okay with me. So I've got this big hole punch, it's actually for leather and stuff like that and I'm going to make my holes not the tiniest ones. Um, another way you can punch the holes is with an awl and this is one from my leather crafting things and you can make a good size hole then use a darning needle and sew your binding with embroidery floss. So I'm going to make my holes about that big because I want to, um, what I'm using for my, my binding I think is going to be this hemp string. Now I haven't completely decided so I think what I'm going to do is put it together so that you can see how it can be done and then uh, in my next video I'm going to start decorating this book. So I may make a change in that but at least you'll be uh, have a good start on everything. So again I want to make sure these are nice and straight on the fold. They're, they've all been folded firmly. So I'm going to position this on this fold in as far as it can go. And just check. Yep, we're nice and even there. And this is Yay! We've done it. Let's poke that out. We're through. Excellent. It's nice and sharp. I have to say that for it. Now I want to make sure that this these are all lined up when I do the other hole. And like I said, you can do holes along the spine if you want to. I decided to keep it simple and you can too. So I'm going to line this up here on the fold or on the fold here and give it a good punch. Let's be extra on this side. So I'm going to have a little, little pieces of circle in there somewhere. Oh, this one had the birthday card on it, that's why. And now I've, now I've moved them off center. So I'll just find that again. Now, what I want to do with this one is the same. And I might have a little trouble because I don't think it'll reach that far. However, there's always a, a different way to do things. So I'm going to position this here where I want my pages to go. And I'm just going to make a little mark with a pencil. There's where the hole needs to go. Now let's see if we can reach for that. I think, you know what? It's not going to work. So what I'm going to do instead is make my hole with an awl. And just spread it out like that. And you can do this on your pages as well. It all is nice and sharp. Big needle will work to make the initial hole, and then you can use a darning needle to make the big hole. So there, I have that. Now I need to measure this. 
and it needs to come it needs to be that long plus have enough to tie so I'm going to give myself extra because one of the things that's kind of fun you can do is with these tie ends you can hang little charms on them and I think that might be fun I may do that we'll have to wait and see so I'm gonna just give myself a bunch of extra here now this is I guess I say that a lot don't don't I and now Put that through here. If you if you're using ribbon, you probably want a larger hole. Okay, there's that. Now all I have to do is put my pages on. Since I've moved some of them, they're not completely lining up here, but that's easy to fix. To find that's, that one frayed a little bit. Use my little sharp scissors. If you're using um, ribbon and the ends are trying to fray, just make them into a really, a really tight and like a shoelace and wrap some some tape around them so there's that side in here. So I'm going to add one more. Not really cooperating as you can see, so I'm just resort to the all for that. And this one kind of got bunched up, so I need to cut it off. <coughs> and I'll pop that in there. Slide that through there. Just push it down with the rest of its pages, pages. There. Now what I want to do with this is tie it off. So you want to have the tightest, like there was looseness in there from the cover. So I think that's as tight as it can go. Just let me look. Yep, that's nice and tight. And then I want to it in a knot so that it can't loosen off. And you have to kind of hold it. If you have somebody else with a finger to hold it, that's great. If you don't, you can do it yourself. And I tighten that up really well. Plus, give it another twist. There. Now I'm going to leave those long for the moment. But if you if you want to, you can obviously just cut them off. So here's our book, and it actually folds quite nicely. Now once I fill it with ephemera, it might be something completely different. However, this is a great place to start, and like I said, I'll probably trim this off. And I do want to, to decorate this cover, front and back, and I want to do a lot of decoration, adding a lot of things into the book. So it, it will end up being probably kind of fat like that, but that's, that's all right. And I think I might even put a ribbon closure on it. I haven't decided yet. But this is how to make a junk journal. You use junk paper, you can use magazine paper, you can use, like I said, 
paper bags, just regular paper. You can do the whole book in something like this, or you can do the whole book in something like this. So when I look through it, I've got different sizes of paper. So I can, I could, for example, take this and, and glue it down here and make it a pocket and then add something here. So it's all just gorgeous. This is, oh, I put that in upside down. Well, that just fixed that problem, didn't it? There's my front cover and there's my back. Oh, I actually like that. Oh, I think it was supposed to go this way. It was meant to. So here are the different pages that we have. There's a newsprint one. There's, this is one of the flower and twig ones. Here's the um, pocket I mentioned. This is all plain, so you've got lots of room for writing in it and for decorating and for you name it. And our plain middle, which is going to be plain no longer after I start working on it. And then here, you could also do the same with a pocket either on this side or on this side, or you could make it do something like this and make a little pocket here and a bigger pocket there and slide little cards in and some more of the other pages. This has still the rough edge on it. These are a little bit different in size, which kind of makes it interesting. I love this stuff. I love that pretty, pretty uh, French music and old letters. And and here's my card from, it says, to mum, thanks for all the ways you make life so sweet. I have really nice kids. And I'm, I may take this out. I may just cover it up so that this watercolor border still shows, which would be nice. And then there's this watercolor page, and then our final page. So next time I'm going to decorate this book, and I'm so glad you joined me for this. And I, I really hope you try this because it's really so much fun. The great thing is there's there are no rules. You don't have to make things perfect, but if you like them perfect, you can make them perfect. And you can it's absorbing, so you can just you know, you don't have to have a lot of room, you don't have to have a lot of supplies. If you want a lot, you can get a lot. And uh, just thanks for being here. It's been really fun. Please remember to subscribe to my channel because the next one is going to be really fun and interesting. And I want you here. So I'll see you next time.